Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, if you've been paying attention to the video game universe, you may have heard of this little game called Mass Effect Andromeda. Yes, it's the fourth game in the Mass Effect series. Okay, obviously everybody has heard of this game. I actually was invited to play that early because, you know, I like playing spaceship games, but it was at the same time as GDC, so I decided to go and hang out with my programmer buddies instead. Which means that instead of having keys to play the game today, like other famous streamers, well, more famous streamers, you know, if I was famous, they would have sent me a key. But the real upside to this is that I get to talk about the galaxy Andromeda. Well, it's as good an excuse as any to talk about science, isn't it? Look, Andromeda the Galaxy is consistently or regularly the most distant object visible to the naked eye. Occasionally, in theory, there could be high-energy gamma-ray bursters which could leave visible events that might be further away, but, you know, if you look up the right time, you can always see Andromeda if the skies are dark enough. So, it has been known throughout history, although the first time it was really documented was by a Persian astronomer in the 10th century. Centuries later, telescopes were invented that allowed it to be studied in greater detail, and uh, Charles Messier included it in his catalogue, which gives it the designation M31. Now, he was thinking that it was a nebula, and for a long time it was just considered the great nebula in Andromeda, in the constellation of Andromeda. William Herschel estimated that it was maybe a couple of thousand times more distant than the star Sirius. It wasn't until the 20th century when Haber Curtis observed Nova, and he noticed that in the records there were several Nova that had been seen in Andromeda, and they were all 10 magnitudes fainter. That is, 10,000 times fainter than any other Nova that were observed. And so he came up with distant estimates of about 500,000 light years. And this became key evidence in what we call the Great Debate. That is a debate between Curtis and Harlow Shapley that took place in 1920. I mean, you've got to know it's important because it's THE Great Debate, it's not A Great Debate. So this was a discussion about how big the universe was, and Harlow Shapley thought that the whole of the Milky Way was basically the entire universe, and that all these spiral nebula were still within the universe. But what Curtis had shown was that Andromeda was very likely far outside the Milky Way, and was indeed a separate galaxy. Incidentally, the word galaxy originates from the Greek word for milk, which was used to describe the Milky Way. So if you've ever eaten galaxy chocolate, that suddenly makes a whole lot more sense now, doesn't it? But even that 500,000 light years was a huge underestimate. In reality, the Andromeda Galaxy is about 2.5 million light years away. And so that lets us actually circle back to the Mass Effect universe and talk about the story, which is essentially you are the vanguard of a colonization fleet which left before the Reapers came in and really messed things up. Spoiler alert, by the way, too late. Uh, so this is a neat little device because, of course, the colony ships left before stuff got really real and therefore they don't have to worry about how you chose to end the series, which colour of ending you chose. So crossing the distance between the galaxies, they did that in 600 years according to the story. So 600 years, 2.5 million light years, that works out to be about 11 light years per day. And that's totally consistent with speeds that have been mentioned previously in the series. Now the question is, would it make sense to send a colony ship across that distance? Well it certainly would if the Reapers were going to come and mess up your stuff. The Andromeda Galaxy is estimated to be about twice the mass of our own galaxy. That is, about 150 billion solar masses of material. It has a lot more stars than the Milky Way. However, the rate of star formation in Andromeda is actually lower. It's estimated that in our own galaxy, we have about three to five solar masses of stars forming every year, whereas in Andromeda, that's as low as one solar mass. And the consequences of this means that there's fewer young stars. And it's the young, bright, hot blue stars that are the ones that go supernova. In the last 200 years, we've only seen one supernova in the Andromeda galaxy. 
It was perhaps once an exciting place, but is now entering a state of quiescence. Uh, un unless, of course, you are an adventurer going there, in which case I am no doubt that there is going to be all sorts of exciting adventures and problems to overcome that don't involve supernova. But they probably will involve other explosions, guns, and occasionally uh, romancing members of your crew. Now, the Andromeda Galaxy is about 220,000 light years across, which is uh, kind of big, but of course it's a long way away. But in terms of apparent size, the area that it covers on the sky, for comparison, it's about uh, 5 degrees across the sky, which is more or less 10 times the diameter of the moon on the sky. Now, by the sound of things, the game is really only going to focus on a small area, I think called the Helios Cluster. Uh, mostly because if you've got FTL drives that can only cover tens of light years per day, you're not going to spend several years traveling from one side of the galaxy to the other. There is a trailer, the Golden Worlds trailer, where they talk about these ideal worlds that have been picked for colonization, and no doubt those will be a core part of this story. But they're all roughly in the same area. There's not going to be any flying from one side of the galaxy to the other like there was in Mass Effect, because they don't have the mass relays anymore. Having said that, it's entirely possible that they do find something like mass relays in the game. And if they do, uh, don't call this a spoiler, because I haven't played the game and therefore don't know. I can't predict the future of Mass Effect plots when I haven't played them, but I can predict the future of the Andromeda Galaxy. It's well known that Andromeda and the Milky Way are orbiting each other. Right now, Andromeda is actually coming towards the Milky Way. It is one of only a couple of hundred galaxies that have blue shifts rather than red shifts. And the current prediction is that in about 5 billion years, Andromeda and the Milky Way will collide. But of course, we won't be caring because at that point we'll be freaking out about our own sun turning into a red giant and uh, destroying the Earth. When we talk about galactic collision, of course, it is a collision, collision between the galaxies, but the stars, the stars are so far apart that it's highly unlikely they'll collide. Uh, it, it's rather like a ping pong ball every couple of miles. If you throw a swarm of those, a couple might come very close to each other and kick each other off into deep space, but most likely none of the stars will be affected directly and the skies will change in very interesting ways. Milky Way and Andromeda will merge to form one giant elliptical galaxy and this uh, collision of the interstellar medium will actually lead to a lot more star formation so there will be a new burst of new stars forming which is convenient because of course the human race should be looking for new homes around then since the sun will be dead. But that's in the way distant future, and truthfully, I'm just looking to next week to see uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, see whether it's uh, worth my time playing. I'll be keeping an eye out. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.